ongoing situation in Ukraine. It's going to have ripple effects on many things, not just gas prices. Right now we're joined by CBS's Bradley Blackburn. He is live outside the United Nations in New York City. Bradley, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we've been talking about some of the local impact here in the Washington area. What are some of the global implications, including here in the U.S.? Well, Tony, good morning. Around the world, financial markets have really tanked overnight on this Russian news. We saw that happen uh, in the markets in the UK and in Asia. And Dow futures dropped some 700 points uh, after Russia began this invasion. And of course, we have to wait a few hours to see uh, how the market reacts when it opens here in the United States. As you've been reporting this morning, it's also having a major effect on oil prices. Oil prices jumped six dollars or jumped six dollars a barrel following the Russian invasion. That brings oil to its highest price in years. Now, that is bad news for all of us who are paying more at the gas pump right now as it is. Of course, oil is a global commodity. So with Russia being the number two producer around the world, what's happening will certainly affect prices for all of us, Tony. Uh, Bradley, we've seen uh, President Biden has put um, uh, a, a variety of sanctions in place. What else is being done around the globe to respond to this? Well, the U.N. Uh, continues to hold emergency sessions over this. They had their second meeting of the Security Council last night, an emergency session that was happening right as the first explosions were being reported in Ukraine. Uh, the Russian uh, dip, the, the Russian ambassador was criticized by the Ukrainian ambassador, and the Secretary General at the United Nations pleaded with President Putin to bring his troops back to Russia. Of course, the diplomatic effort, Tony, has done little to prevent this invasion so far, but it does continue. And even though uh, the UN has little teeth in this matter, countries around the world are joining in sanctions. The EU says they are going to impose their strongest package of sanctions against Russia that they've ever had. Uh, so many countries are joining in this effort. What will be interesting to watch is how China responds to that. This morning, Tony, there are reports that China has agreed to purchase Russian wheat, uh, and that could weaken some of the impact of American sanctions, European sanctions. So that's something to watch uh, as this all unfolds. Hmm. Uh, and Vladimir Putin says he doesn't want to occupy Ukraine. So, so what's the end goal? Uh, he just wants the eastern part of the country. He's going to uh, take over all of the country. What's he looking for? That is the big question right now, Tony. And really, we are in the middle of the fog of war here as uh, as attacks are reported across Ukraine, shelling, explosions, Russian tanks rolling in across the border. But it is not clear at this point in time what President Putin uh, wants out of this confrontation. We know that he has a, a vision of, uh, of the former Soviet Union being restored in some way. Uh, and so this plays into his worldview. It's also interesting uh, that the Russian president in his comments said this is about the demilitarization and denazification of Ukraine. What he's doing there, Tony, is referencing some Russian propaganda uh, that suggested that Ukraine was controlled by neo-Nazis. Of course, there's no evidence of that, but that is what the Russian public is being led to believe. And President Putin is using that as justification for this invasion. All right. Bradley Blackburn reporting from New York. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it.